Добрый день. Сегодня в Казанский федеральный университет с официальным визитом прибыл доктор Клаус Альберт Бауэр, заместитель председателя Европейского форума Восточной международной ассоциации адвокатов. В рамках его визита были прочитаны две открытых лекции, посвященные роли практикующего юриста в финансовой деятельности организации государства. А сейчас наш уважаемый гость согласился ответить на несколько вопросов в рамках программы «Экономикс». Доктор Бауэр, uh, профессор Бауэр, мы хотели бы спросить вас о вашем впечатлении о университете Казани и Казани Федерального университета. Thank you for asking those beautiful questions. I must say I have lived quite a long time in Russia. I lived in Moscow for almost five years in the 90s, but I've never had a chance to come to Kazan, or to Tatarstan for that matter, and I was very happy when I received the invitation to come here and, among other things, also to give the lectures about uh, financing matters here at this prestigious law faculty. Now, when I came here, of course, I before I knew young Lenin was studying here, so already that is um, one thing everybody knows. But I was very impressed by the quality of the organization, of the building, and the sheer um, volume of legal education you provide. I was told that there are, if it's true, 3,000 students um, just in the area of law. That is the info. So I have been familiar with Moscow and with the Moscow um, legal environment there in the 90s. Uh, and I'm very impressed now to find uh, what is being done in Kazan and how uh, the Dean has received me with well, a very warm welcome. And also the students, uh, they participated actively in the lectures. Um, the, we had an excellent Iskander was giving the translations in the lectures. So I really had the impression that uh, they were all very interested. And so I had a wonderful time here and I'm very grateful to have had that opportunity. Yes. Uh, Professor Bai, the second question. Uh, in the framework of lectures, you have uh, covered the question of uh, forming the Russian financial law. And you have told that in the 1990s uh, it was changed a lot. Uh, so if we speak about the future, uh, how do you estimate the, um, the development of financial regulation in Russia and uh, could we uh, become closer uh, to the international standards uh, in this area. Okay, thank you for this very interesting question. Um, first of all, um, when I came to Moscow in June 93 and then a little later we opened a, a legal office with the help of young Russian lawyers in 93. This was in the middle of a huge transformation. Um, the entire regime of Soviet law was kind of put into a totally new environment and it was a very complex pr uh, process of trans transposition. Why? There was one level, old Soviet law, then there was a new level of new laws and the relationship between those two was to the extent that the new law contradicts old law, the old law no longer sushis to it, no, is, is no longer applicable, but to the extent it does not contradict, the old law is still there, which was a highly demanding uh, way of transfer of legal systems, and I am not actually aware um, in the entire history of mankind of a comparable peaceful transformation of a society corresponding to what happened in Russia after the breakup of the Soviet Union. So I'm really a big admirer of how this has worked in a few years, and it were difficult times. It politically, everything changed. Um, ideologically, everything changed. If you imagine that it was illegal even to trade anything in the streets, to sell and buy, to make money, was illegal. So all of a sudden you have a new mindset and within a few years, peacefully, this society has um, 
received a complete new set of laws, new institutions, new constitution, new political parties. And everything changed. Now in the area of law, I was myself involved. We advised a little bit the Duma at the time. We worked with the Central Bank of the Russian Federation. We worked with the um, supervisory agency then for Tsenye Bumagi. And we tried to give our experience from various Western countries to help the Russians to find the way which was best for their legal system. And of course people in the West frequently don't understand that there are all traditions in Russia. There was even a Duma in the Tsarist um, area that for some years, 1906 or so, so, 10 years, 11 years, there was already Duma, there were laws. There was a Grashtansky Codex, etc. So we, from a German side, we always found that we can understand a code-based, like a Grashtansky Codex-based legal system and the way of thinking legally. I felt always quite close to the way of how people think in Russia. And so we looked at this process, we helped this process, and I think it was a very big success. Of course, there are problems. There were kind of corruption issues, there were crime issues and so forth. But in general, I think the negative sides of the transformation have been exaggerated frequently and the positive sides to find such a peaceful transgression from one system to the opposite side are underestimated. So all in all, I think even in the financial area, the whole banking system and everything, it is a success and it works until these days. Now, of course, are there problems? Yes. Are there big problems? Of course. But we have the same in the West we have, and the biggest crisis we have seen did not come from Russia but it came in 2007 2008 from some other parts of the world and we until these days um, struggle with the resolution of these issues so um, yes problems exist but I think even though, uh, for the future I have absolute confidence that Russia will find the strength to do the necessary as it has done in the last 10 years so that is the last question. So you are the author of a lot of research, research papers uh, devoted to international uh, banking regulation. And uh, the last time I um, witnessed a lot of uh, different um, citations, a lot of different impressions uh, on the need for reforming the system of international financial regulation. Uh, this regards the issues of systematically significant financial organizations, the shadow banking sector, uh, the crediting uh, ranking agencies so um, is there any need is there any need uh, for better uh, for harder regulation and the control of the global financial system from the um, state uh, state authorities and international institutes so harder um, control of world financial system uh, by state agencies and international institutes so that is the question um. When I wrote actually my doctoral dissertation, Kandidatura um, uh, in 32 years ago, I wrote about international banking supervision. You have probably found that somewhere. Actually, at the time, um, there was very little uh, international banking supervision in the true sense of the world. It was basically the banks were organized and supervised basically on a national level. That is kind of the, the what we call the prudential supervision to make sure that the bank uh, is run accordingly to the rules and is not getting insolvent ultimately with the object of protecting the money of the depositors. That is the kind of the, um, the main goal of banking supervision. This was in Europe organized purely on a national level. Now if you look today, 32 or 3 years later, the world has dramatically changed. We do have in Europe a functioning system of European banking supervision and as you know 
We have in the European Central Bank, which has not only responsibility for the euro and for the, um, uh, for the currency, but also the European Central Bank, since a um, short time, also has responsibilities for banking supervisions for the big important banks. So this is a totally new development that we have a real, the, competent, the competence has been transferred to international bodies. Was it necessary? Absolutely, because the markets are so integrated that if you allow in one country a banking system to fail, that there will be contagion or the possibility of contagion, so the effect may be felt in other countries. So we are, have we finished uh, the development, of course not. It is a process and it's a complicated process. It has to do also with giving up a big portion of national sovereignty and uh, it is not an easy process for national states to go along the road of interna international integration. First of all, there will be more regional integration and as we said in the lectures also when it comes to the insolvency regime for states, eventually also I think we will have more important international worldwide um, institutions regulating industry, regulating the banking industry. Yes, thank you for this conversation. Доктор Баур, благодарю вас за ответ и за участие в нашей программе. Напомню, что сегодня мы встречались с заместителем председателя Европейского форума Восточной международной ассоциации адвокатов, доктором Клаусом Альберт Бауром. До свидания.